Meatloaf. You know Meatloaf, the singer? I'll do anything for love, but I won't do that. And I will do anything for love, but I won't do that. Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Welcome. <laughs> oh, it's so much different now. To the Board Game Snobs Podcast. We're coming off having our friend, our dear friend. He's our dear friend now. Mark. Oh, yeah. We're in. We're Bes- in like Flynn. Beseda. Besada. 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 Uh, uh, Actually, he said however you want to say it. It's fine. Uh, well, that's why I call it my friend, Mark. Me and my friend Mark, who is now, he is of the Board Game Barrage, and we're basically part of their network now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we are. We are. If you come on our show, we're best friends forever. The Board Game Snobs Barrage Network. We're part of the Gateway Network. <sighs> Look, so I've said some things about the Gateway Network in the past. Yeah. That were very derogative. You still need to send in our information. I, by the time this airs, I will have. I will have sent in our information, and I am trying to get, I'm trying, I've put out an olive branch to Jeff. You know how I feel about Jeff's, G-offs, to solve this, this problem that we've been having. And we're, we're getting there. We're resolving it, and it's fine. So. Why an olive branch? Why does that designate peace? Have you ever seen a fight at the Olive Garden? Probably on YouTube. I, I guarantee you can no, find there are, no, you, The Applebee's of the Italian food world. You're thinking of Waffle House. Waffle House is where you go to throw down. You, uh, I think if you're going to extend something... There's that's, breadsticks. ...that's plant-related, it should be... Endless. ...cannabis. Endless breadsticks. You extend a Actually, cannabis I, leaf, I think that would, that would lead to peace. All you see is just breadsticks just flying all around the restaurant, just beating... <laughs> Just beating jousting, people. jousting, jousting. With jousting. <laughs> <laughs> like get the big hits. <laughs> you tape them together with lettuce. <laughs> Enrique really thought that joke was funny <laughs> because all I can imagine is just people beating themselves or beating other people with bread. That's amazing. You, just, you like tape bread to your hand. And then just like flail about each other with like like, like you uh, just tape uh, the no, bread to, you to that, make a like knightly helmet and just wear it. Now, that made zero sense. Why are you going to take bread to your he- head to make a helmet? Is that what you said? Yes. Now, look, we were having a reasonable bread fight discussion haven't up until just wo- then. Haven't you ever woke up with bread head? <laughs> <laughs> See, Jerry saved you. Oh, okay. You're welcome. So then, <laughs> And welcome. Um the Washington Zoo. Oh, oh! So we're getting off the Olive has Garden. welcomed its very first armadillo pup in its 116 year history. So they got an armadillo. Oh, they have a baby. Armadillo uh, Point Defiant Zoo and Aquarium's Southern Three Banded Armadillos Vespa and Scooter. They made sweet love to each other. <laughs> armadillo. Scooter, down. scooter, armadillos. Down. That's where you curl up and Balling. cry in the curl, <laughs> calm, cry in the corner, right? The pup is the first armadillo birth in the zoo since its establishment in 1905. Vespa, the mama, was trained to allow them to give her voluntary ultrasounds throughout her pregnancy. Did you know the southern three banded armadillo is? Uh, almost on the endangered list, and that that hurts me. It's on the threatened list of species, with the species being in significant decline due to widespread habitat loss. We could lose our mascots. No, we just go to nine banded. I mean, um, people can't tell the difference. But the, nothing else rolls up into an adorable ball. They do. Don't all armadillos? No, they roll do up not. The Only the three banded. Well, they kind of roll. They all. They no, all they roll. do not. They we all went over this a little bit. They all kind of curl. They curl up. They curl up. They're fine. It's fine. It's fine. The three bandits are cute. They're the nine bit bandits carry leprosy. Well, there's a big difference. Well, why are you, you want a diseased or an adorable? So I see. Just because one is slightly disabled due to its affinity for for the plague, it's a carrier. You seem to be anti nine bandit. I am anti nine bandit. I pro three. That's hurt many a feelings. 
you are just hating on an animal that cannot defend itself because its phalanges are rotting off due to some sort of bacterial infection. Well, I don't have to worry about them turning off the podcast because they ain't got no fingers to do it with. Okay, so the, and the armadillo is not our mascot, really. It's that sort of, kind of, right? I mean, it just came about. We just can't it just let it go. About. It's like Enrique. You gotta hold on to it. It just happened. It's just there. It's an accident. I just, Thanks I thought, to. I found, I used to hate armadillos. Mm-hmm. Why? I thought, they were, I thought they were ugly, and they are. <laughs> they're like a. So you a, still hate them? They have general. like a shell. They're a, like a tortoise shelled opossum. They're basically a possum in a taco shell. <laughs> but then I saw the three banded, and there's one even smaller, and it's cute. The it's pink, actually the, the cute. The pink one. The little pink one. Yeah, they're pretty neat. It was I like, adorable. They look like pigs. Did you hear? Armored pigs. Newsweek reported. Now, this is a couple weeks old, especially by the time this comes is out. Is this fake news? It it was. I, it, I don't think I ever found where it was all verified. Okay. But Newsweek reported it. Newsweek, I don't know how reliable I am. Oh. That a flight attendant named Ainsley Elizabeth mm-hmm. posted a TikTok video. Oh. Where she mentioned security having to meet the flight. Because of a woman breastfeeding a cat. Did you hear that? I think that was fake. Oh, it, it is Did fake. That's it's fake. literally a that, st- stuffed cat. That was fake. Now, I saw a video that was making fun of it. That's fake. That's got to be fake. It, it, that's fake. fake. But it was fake. It's been verified. Yeah. It, that's fake. It, it's definitely Because fake. I saw that video, and at first I was real, and this year it was a stuffed cat. I was like, <laughs> Well, you could. It was it was a dead stuffed cat, <laughs> but she was breastfeeding it. Yeah, googly eyes. Oh my god, oh, that was hilarious! You're like kicking a dead horse, you're breastfeeding a dead cat. It's about the same thing. Did you know there's a precise speed that they now count as no longer jogging but running? What is it? Six miles an hour. So six miles an hour is running. Five point nine 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 nine, and anything underneath the jogging. Mm. Actually, okay. So when does a walk a jog? I well, think that's all in your form. It's three feet, three three miles an hour. Because my wife can walk as fast as I jog. Well, of course, but I'm saying that that's jogging though. Mm, yeah, and it, you'd have to have a speed. You have to really know the speed. I'd say well, they should because I can maintain jogging form very slowly. Well, people, anybody can maintain. You're just lifting up your knees a little bit higher. Why are they doing this? Why do we have to? So areas where they say no jogging, they can write you a ticket. Well, no, I think it becomes because most people say, like some people say, I jog, and some people say, well, I'm a runner. Oh, so then, and I think six miles, and that's pretty fast. That's so pretty it's like fast. all these people who are like faux runners, they're they're actually joggers. I mean, I can waddle. At three to four miles an hour. That's a you, fifteen minute you mile. You waddle quickly, and you then can. anything. So four, so four to six would be jogging. I would say. I'll go with that. Sounds reasonable to this me. Sounds reasonable. Are you pro runner or pro jogger? I'm a jogger. I'm pro jogging. I'm not pro runners. Running, I mean, that's for more elite athletes no, than no, myself. No, running is pretentious. <laughs> Why are you expending that much energy for no reason? Like you can get the same from walking and jogging. You're just you're just showing off. You have no need to move that fast. Rigay, tell what? me about your life. No, right. we're not done yet. Did you know? Oh my god. Though definitely unsanitary, peeing in a pool might seem harmless for your health. After all, urine's sterile, right? Mm-mm. As is chlorine. As it turns out, though, urine and chlorine create dangerous chemicals when combined are the same chemicals used for toxic chemical warfare. Right. And if you breathe it, it could harm your lungs, potentially kill you. Did you know that Enrique stopped banging your pool? He has a sports pool. What does that mean? It's the one where it's deeper in the middle and shallower on the ends. It's made for pool jogging. It's made for pool volleyball, Ooh. which is why I play volleyball in the summer. In the water, water vol- aqua volleyball, is that what you call it? Uh, aqua vol, aqua. You know what? Let's call it aqua vol. Aqua vol volleyball. No, that's an awful name. Anyways, aqua water vol- polo. Well, it turns into that. But yeah, we put up the net and that's where we do our volleyball is in the water. It's low in Cyanogen chloride is what it's called. Mm-hmm. And that's 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 what we call the pool. Let's go get <laughs> After this, Enrique's this, been in it. <laughs> Enrique gets in it. It's not blue. It's the one weird thing about being... Is that real? It's more of a like what? a yellowish lime green. Is that real, the stuff that turns your pee a color, or is that just like for... I've never seen it happen. 
I, haven't I urinate in every body of water I come across <laughs> just to make sure. That You're I'm the yet- reason. Whenever Jerry leaves a hotel, suddenly all the people become sick. Hazmat. With cyanogen chloride. It's like, why are all these people sick? We don't know. He's a bioterrorist. That's that. Going around being in, in the pool. It just happens. I had to test the waters. <laughs> Well, I just- other byproducts called nitrosamines, nitrosamines, nitrosamines can even cause cancer. Mm. Peeing in a pool, attempted murder. That's assault. Assault. You should use that instead of chlorine, and you won't have to worry about well, it. Well, his pool is salt water. Oh, well, then you can pee all you want. That's why we go there, because we both enjoy peeing in the pool. <laughs> no one knows this. <laughs> Nobody knows. It's like a billion parts per million of urine. <laughs> like it doesn't make any difference. It's so like it's not going to make a difference. So it's like uh, why? Why are you so uptight about it? Is urine? It, it is sterile, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it comes from your body. But you're not supposed to drink it. You can, but it's bad. But, yeah, because it's. But it doesn't hydrate you because there's nothing in it. Yes. Well, it just it's just got it's, a lot of nasty stuff in it. It's all yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. Oh, well, it's so well, it's all, it, so it's sterile, but yet it's still. Crap in it. Well, not crap. Well, but. it's not. It's not because when you drink water, like, otherwise you wouldn't have a need to filtration system. Obviously, yeah. It's just like it is your waste. You're right. That makes sense. But why is what? So does sterile doesn't necessarily mean safe for consumption. No, right, urine's not sterile. When you kept saying that, finally, I that that triggered the. I'm pretty sure that's a. Not right. Is that an old wife? That's an old... Well, I found that in an article. It's not sterile. It has uh, bacteria in it. Best Life Online would not lead me astray. That No, it is not well, it sterile. It looks like they left you astray and just left you in well, a ditch. Double check it. Well, no, I'm not double... Because it, it, sterile means it's free from bacteria. Your urine has bacteria in it. But is that after immediate? I've heard that if it sits, it gains bacteria. But upon immediately coming out of your body, I didn't think it didn't. Well, now, how could it gain bacteria? Just, you know, sitting there and like no. bugs crawl into but, it. No, like, no, no. It's, you're getting no, it's, rid of bacteria. No, it's not sterile. Urine's not sterile. Your urine is not sterile. It's not no sterile. No urine's. No one's urine sterile. My urine's 80 proof. Why are we talking about this? Well, this is because the hot banter? Yes, because about urine? It's weird. What okay, so you? I'm. Okay. Why are you in a rush? I am actually because this banter is 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 odd. And say this, and then you know what? You know what? Some odd banter. You got to admit. Sometimes people like odd banter. Sometimes, but it is odd. You know, I, sometimes we go on and on, and then you you trash my. You ask me to say something, and then you always say, "Is this the banter?" But I want to make sure this is the banter. Is it, are we talking about board games? Then it's the banter. Okay, I'm just making sure. I didn't want to. I didn't know if this. And was... I was thinking too. Oh my god! Sometimes we often. <laughs> I, I after all these meta movies have come out, we had No Way Home, Matrix Resurrections, yeah, Matrix Rehash. I think maybe I'll blame myself. Maybe. I make the show too meta because we I talk about the way we do the show instead of just doing the show. Right. But you like talking about how fun we oh, you are meta. You are in the metaverse. You are the creator of the metaverse because you, I'm Zuckerberg. Yes. You, you you will not allow something to be a stick or a thing. You have to call it out and try to point out that this is a thing, you know? All right, I'm working on that from here the, on out. The facade you try to go. This is and it's like everybody knows. I'm working on it from here on out. I will no longer be meta. I will not be self-referential in any way. But no, you, self-referencing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, self-referencing. I'm, I'm more of a self monkey wrenching It's a thing that people and it's yeah, you can do it. It's fine, but it's just often a not very productive. Well, and it's too inside. Right. Like, it's not welcoming. Welcome any new listeners to the Board Game Snobs podcast. A podcast that's 90% nonsense. Well, people don't. We don't have any new games. listeners. New to listeners? Nor new ones. We might have some new listeners. Oh, we don't have any. So we don't We don't have to worry yeah, about we it. Know We've it. plateaued. That's true. Nobody listens. The same people not, listen to us. Nobody listens. The same people listen to and us. And that's all that and we I want. I appreciate we that. We don't want anybody else. Stop ta- stop rating the podcast. The five stars don't. No. Leave it alone. You don't have to rate us. Just tell somebody. No, don't tell anybody. See, Please, listen. Oh listen. The same, same listen. Old, this is, we've had this fight yes. <laughs> 50 
15 times. There you go. Referencing. See? Okay. Can't even help it. So I'm just saying. Just, just I it. failed again. So we're going to. So if, if you would like, we could talk about a board game. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. That is actually <laughs> uh, very mm, interesting, I found. For for one that I was, uh, oh. I like the theme of it. It's Which very, one? Last Aurora. Oh. Last Aurora. So this game came out 2020. Aries, I believe. That's the same company who did the the triple uh, Rondell spaceship thing. What was that called? Scorpius Freighter. Yes. That was okay. Uh, it's okay. It was okay. I think we kind of we kind of. Oh, well, it's pickup deliver. That's not our game, but lots of people liked it. Not us. Last Aurora Actually, I hated it. is a apocalyptic frozen wasteland. Basically, you're in, looks like Montana. You're in, you're in Montana, drinking your urine. You're in Montana. With your convoy trying to hurry up and get to a boat that's leaving to get away from this horrid tundra. Why is it frozen? Is that part it's, of the dystopian? Po- yes, dystopian. That's what most dystopians are. It's really hot or it's really cold. It's like all desert... Or all frozen. Or all. Fr- which would you prefer? Uh, all frozen. I think that, but uh, depends on the exact temperature. I think all desert would be more manageable. Now nah, here's no, a, here's, because, here's why I say unless frozen. it comes to nighttime. Well, Here- you you like you. I feel like you would have more of of a su- survivability in the cold. Yeah, because you can't if you are. You're really hot in the desert. There's well, there's cold, no though. way. No, there's no way that you can at, uh, efficiently <laughs> efficiently cool your body down if you're in a desert. There's I, no way to warm your body up if you're in a tundra. Well, make a fire. All right, make a fire. Yeah, but here's, buy an air conditioner. Well, here, no, no, it's no. a poke. Oh, it's, ah, well, it, that's the point. Yeah, there's no way to cool. Find off. Find iced tea. There's no way to cool off. My point is, I understand that, but I think. Now here's your point. It, 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 it depends on the extreme no, temperatures. No, it doesn't. It is this completely negates everything you're about to say. There's no water in the tundra. There's plenty of water in the cold. That's why people can survive in the cold. There's water. You can survive a long time without any food. But when there's no snow and there's no moisture and you cannot create water, that's a good point. You're dead. You make a valid point, that's, sir. That's, that's, but, and I allow that. And so, like, that's why the desert is rough. Yeah. But you said tundras. Tundras are actually frozen deserts. Well, something like that. Yeah. So it's like a tundra, like a frozen desert. But you know what we meant. Like a, I got you. I love them all my... I, I personally would prefer... I prefer cold to hot. I any know. day of the week. It's 65 degrees in your house and right I'll, now. I love it. You freeze us yes. out all the Enrique time. Enrique don't have no sleeves on. And it's because you're both weirdos. But it, that's okay. It's just, it's just not cold. The last Aurora, with this very interesting theme of having a convoy that you are trying to get and r- race other players to this in-game boat so that you can board it and get out of this godforsaken wasteland. And the neat thing about this is that your cards that you have, which represent your convoy, they're, the artwork is very interesting. It connects which I think is very, it creates the little card convoy, I guess you want to call it. And you're able to stack the cards on top of each other. Cardvoy. And add like various trailers and other co- type of post-apocalyptic junk. Depending upon your level of truck, your starting trucks can have up to two attached trailers. There's Peterbilt's. You can have, uh, what they call them, triples. You can do doubles. You can't do triples. You have to have a special license for triples in you this do. game. No doubles. But not after a while when you level up, then you can start getting triples. But I really I was completely enamored before we go into too more detail about the, how the gameplay. The cards in this game are absolutely fantastic. The art is I love, love, love this art, and I love the way the cards, the convoy pieces connect to each other. It's that's fantastic. And each little card that represents your convoy that has the trucks and so forth on it and the trailers has little spots where you put your food, uh, your ammunition and your fuel, as well as the little meeples that represent the people on your convoy. And the people on your convoy are what you use to explore the wasteland. And so the game has like three distinct little stages, one where you use your people to go out and explore these various areas in front of you, which is basically... 
your explorer rating, you expend this work and you scavenge whatever little area here. And it you get certain things. You get certain items. You're able to build onto your convoy. And then you're allowed to move your expend fuel to move your little car around the map. And of course, like I said, it's a race. You're trying to hurry. And in our play of it, as well as the solo that I did, uh, I didn't I didn't make it to the end. Well, yeah, you, none of us did. You explore, Just, you're gathering supplies, then you move, and then as the game progresses, there's these raiders that come out and they can attack you. Yeah, there's a very interesting little uh, combat mechanic where these other enemies come out, and defeating them, of course, gives you uh, some loot. loot. Yes. And like Gobby said, this game is very... It's, it's light enough that... You're not totally wiped out by trying to have to learn these finicky rules. The thing that is very frustrating is the rule book. The rule book is not that great. I highly recommend finding a, a watch it play video and just going that route because I had a terrible time with this rule book. I think there's just a lot of translation and even the BGG page of it has a lot of people asking clarifications. Uh, the board is double sided. There's another side of it that has a uh, different map and different areas and some extra rules. There's a solo version to it. It's actually pretty good with an automa deck. Uh, I really enjoyed this game. It's a, it has that feel of kind of like Imperial Settlers, I guess, where you have your little player board and you're moving cards from the left side to the right side, which is just helping you to keep track of which workers you've used. And mm-hmm. each of your workers have little bitty powers that help you out a little bit, plus the damage to your convoy that comes from the enemy cards. This, this game has the theme similar to like uh, Wasteland Express, kind of. Of course, the the component quality is much less than that. Or what's the one that is the uh, dystopian? Oh, the fifty first states. Yes, fifty first states. Um, But the art. But I like this way better. I I, yes, this this is a really good game. There's There's more to it. There's actually an upgrade pack that gives you little small miniatures and stuff like that. I didn't get that, but and the card play that you use with your characters that's thematic because if you send them out to explore, well, they get exhausted. And when, once they're exhausted, well, the, after they're exhausted, then they got to rest. And after they're rested, then they come back into your hand. But you can fast forward that a little bit if you give them some food. Right. So then they're not quite as exhausted. Then they just need some rest. So it skips a step. Uh, all that was very thematic. Also, when they go out to scavenge, you can give them a food and it boosts their power level. So if it's a three, it boosts them up to a four. There's nothing beyond a four. If it's a one or two, it boosts them up. Because depending on the spot on the board that your cards are at that you're wanting to get stuff from, uh, if it's a level three where this card's at, you have to have a level three person to get those things. Uh, that's very that's very basic, but it's also very good, very sensible. And, and what I found about this company, Aries, this is very similar to Scorpius Freighter in the sense that they take a mechanic and they really... They they take an idea in a game and they don't dumb it down, but they distill it to where it's just the fundamental aspect of the game. Like Scorpius Freighter, even though we didn't like it, it was a very nice production in terms of you having your own player board. That's your spaceship. That's where you're putting your little tiles that represents your upgrades and the the Rondale actions. It was very intuitive. It's that's like my boy. it wasn't hard to understand. Last Aurora, even though the rule book's awful, but once you have this learned, it makes perfect sense. It moves along very quickly. I'm going to use these workers, these cards. I'm going to exhaust them to get these resources or these things and add them to my convoy. Okay, now the next round. Okay, I'm going to move my convoy. I'm going to use my fuel, and this is how fast my convoy moves because of all the bonuses I have, and I'm going to move to this area. Oh, I'm getting attacked. This is what I'm going to... And you just... It makes super sense. Like, you're not sitting here fighting to understand what's going on. Unfortunately, the rule book is just awful. I just keep saying that because this, this could have been a <laughs> it was, very... It was absolutely awful. Fortunately, there is a... I forget the name of the guy, but just search it on YouTube and there's a good explanation. The only part of this game that I did not find intuitive was the battle, though. Well, this... With the flipping of those cards, the level of the guns, the level of the attack back, and then flipping a card again to see... That was... I did like that, actually. Because it's not... You're not really trying to to fight the bandits. You're just trying to defend yourself while you're on the go trying to get to this boat. The combat that they did in this game could have been very easily um, 
circumvented by just having dice or something of that nature, or just a card that flips out. Instead, what they do is the players are allowed to expend one of their ammunition cubes and fire one of their weapons. And depending on how strong your weapon is, you flip a card out of this deck and it tells you how much damage your weapon does to the enemy. Makes perfect sense. Then if you don't kill that enemy, then they flip a card out. It shows how much damage they do to you. And then on the top part of the deck, it shows which area of your convoy is hit. And so it seems very odd when you're first learning how to do it. But it's very similar to the combat in, um, is it Austral Z, the Martin Wallace game? Where there is, there's, well. you're, you're, well, you're playing cards out and, and it, it's a card based combat. I actually very much liked it in Last Aurora because it adds a little bit of flavor. Well, I just, like you said, so I'm flipping one for attack. If I don't kill them, then one for their attack. And then you have to find out, you look at another card to see where they attack. And then if you do, kill them then you flip over another to see who gets the benefit so you have potentially flipping over but you three or four you don't or have five no, cards. you don't have to do that you can flip over one card and i'll tell you everything we were flipping over multiple cards because we we thought it was but, for every new enemy yeah but but looking through the deal you literally just flip you can flip over one card and it has it all on there but you weren't doing it you weren't paying attention you weren't the one doing it so it didn't make you any i difference. was watching you but you could flip one card and it says everything on it it literally has your attack. It has the attack and then their attack. And their attack. And, and but also. What are, but what are. The, you do the both levels? So if it's a level yes, one, yes, level it's two, all it's all on that there. one it's card. It's all on that yep. one card. It's one. You can do it where you just. We flip would, one okay. Card. But I still don't like that. To, then to see the damage, you look at these other cards. Then if you de- destroy them, then you flip it over and it's a random draw. Of who gets the benefit. Which is... If you all inflicted damage. Yeah, which is... Um, which in, is a game, in a game In a of, game that is scavenging and survival, that makes sense. In a game where there has been zero randomness, other than cards you know that come out that you want to purchase, that just seemed kind of weird to me. But it's not... Ra- well, the- it seems like it should go to either the first person that attacks or whoever did the most attack points. But you're also forgetting that... Everybody who committed to defeating that person gets a draw from the random loot thing, which are in-game victory points and just as valuable. Okay, okay so, so then the one person get gets a, they get a, so the card that you defeat, it's in a, it's, it becomes part of your caravan. So that's a, a nice bonus. And then the other people get some loot. Too. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah it, works, benefits. it works out. And I mean, it's, it's done very, it's, but it is very hard to learn. Well, it's because the rule book sucks. Yes. Like, legitly... As soon as we... Like, worst rule book ever! No. Oh. You never even looked at it. I know, but I heard you complain the whole time. Well, yeah. It's well, be- he was able to find, like... It is because like, some things, they but- don't give examples of things for which they should give examples of, and they give examples of every mundane little thing, but not the most important aspects like of it. Like the main thing. Like, there's no example of, this is how the combat works, or yeah. this is how, it's just simply... That's why I'm a YouTube guy. And I don't like, I don't like, I hate watching videos where you try I, to. I'm the complete opposite. Like, like, I'd rather watch him go through it and say, okay, do this, this, and this. Yeah, it's just like, I guess it, I think I agree with both of you. Either oh, of I can like watch a video or read the rule book, because if I watch a video... Either I have to depend on that guy's word of his understanding of the game, or I have to look at a rule book that's either really that can explain the main mechanics and main things in the game, or it's just a sucky rule book. Yeah, I retain things better than I read. Yeah, that's is, just how it is. Yeah, which is but fine. I really enjoyed Last Aurora. I'd like to play the. Um, kind of now that we have it down play it again a couple more times to kind of get a better feel of it but really did appreciate even though the production quality of it is not bad it's not great but the artwork in it is very nice i did enjoy that it's incredible i really love the art in this game well, the board the the aesthetic of the board the way they did like it's kind of like grimy I really, I love that. I love this. I love playing this game, even though it was super hard to figure out because of the rule book. But yeah, it's it's good. I'll have to get you the the minis to it. 
Oh, and the and please the back, do. I want I want to play the flip side. I want to hold those little gas cans of in my this hand. game. I want to play the beta side. I, I will say that I, I'm interested in playing the other side of it as well. The thing is, though, that the upgrade kit to this game it does have little gas cans and things of that nature, and I hate games that have cubes that the colors don't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. That always gets me, and I this is this is one of them where it's like, what I don't, color should gas be? What's well, like, exactly? What should it be? I don't yeah. know. Like a red gas yeah. can. That's what food. I, what color is food? What's well, orange in this? <laughs> it's like an orange. But yeah, a shape like, would be much better. Yeah, that's why there are some games that and, lend themselves and different to different shapes at least. Yeah, well, that's that. These were all just cubes of different colors, right? And well, so that that's well, why I think they went mainly with like vibrant colors or colors that were just. Well, they went with the blue and the blue and the orange thing. That's 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 traditionally the two colors that stand out that weird neon blue and that neon orange that you see in like the force awakens and all the movie posters from like the last five years where they figured out those color palettes are attractive to the human eye and people like those colors. They stand out, they catch, and, they contrast well. And I, I think I'm okay with that because it, it, it bring, it pops out of what, of what resource, re, what, are, what are the resources and, the things that we need to gather because if it was all the same color, then we'd be trying to look for something that we can't really see. It can't be the same color. No, just have or, all or nude the same cubes. shade cubes. of color. I want all the cubes nude, <laughs> and just that's it. All no, taupe. just at the very least, do at least around a cube, a diamond, something, but. Like a uh, 51st state, they come out with, I mean, they were wooden components, but they were in the shape of a gun, in the shape of a food. A food? A food. I'm hungry. Would give you me, like to give go me a chicken bone. with me to go on a food? Give me a food. It's like, just give me the orange cube. No, just give me the gun. But Last Aurora seemed to like it slid under a lot of people's radar last year. I enjoyed it. I, I too enjoyed it. I've had Same. it on my shelf for a long time thinking, oh, I wonder if Gobby will like this. Loved it. And I I did not anticipate it being this good. I'd like to play it again. To I was quite enamored. Hash out my thoughts on it a little bit. What more. happened to the first Aurora? I need the prequel. <laughs> <laughs> the prequel. All right. Oh, uh, wait a minute. We can still talk about, like, for instance, we played Barrage again. One of my favorite games. I love Barrage. I remember the first time we played Barrage. We were so confused on how, how to play it the very first time. It, it is certainly <laughs> a very finicky and yet, at the same time, very smooth game. After multiple plays of it at different levels of player count, I must say, I prefer this game with as many players as you can you can have. If or, you got four, or at least the minimal amount of players. You got to have four players. <laughs> the minimals would be three or four. Yeah, no. You oh, gotta, is it three? No, no. No, you, no. you can you can solo it. No, I I'm, I don't. But I don't, what are you saying, minimal? Like that, like just like two. Yeah, I like it with two. Or I like four. it with four. Because, I don't like it with three. Because three is odd. Because I we, enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah, it all. Yeah, because no one fought with you, though. That's the thing. Well, though. no, that's just, just the aspect of the game that really makes it frustrating is that at two players... It had the smartphone thing we discussed earlier. Yeah. That, Jerry that, and Enrique were fighting each other. I was doing my own thing. Right. And so if you have one person out there that's not having any conflict, they're going to run away with it. At four players, you just can't do it. But I, but is that just our style of play or my style of play? Like there might be a, somebody that's like, well, I'm going to get in there with them. Well, but that's not what I'm going to do well, when I see y'all fighting for crap. Well, Jerry can usually fight multiple opponents by himself. While he, I am, he's mainly, very cantankerous. While I'm mainly just like, I got to fight one person because I can't. Well, they, well, you started off siphoning off my water right yeah, off but the bat at the very first, but but like, and then I ignored you and built somewhere else. Yeah, I, I think Barrage is probably one of the finest Euro games within the past several years. I hate that it was marred in such a odd production fiasco because Cranio Games just kind of dropped the ball on that. But an awesome game, and if you're looking for a very interactive, very different. Uh, interesting theme. Yeah, like like this water whole, coming oh, yeah. down a stream and going over dams and harvesting that water for energy. And it is it is an incredible game. And using your your opponents' uh, converters to yeah, you can use their uh, whatever they call turbines or something. Uh, I forget conduits. Yeah, conduits. Conduits. That's what it was. And the fact that it was uh, it's been two years since we played this game. Set it up. A lot of pieces. 
And those those excavators and those are those tiny. are too tiny. They're, yeah, they're too same. tiny. Well, they're I, purposely I, I, tiny because of the wheel. That I you know, have to turn. but that's yeah, just but so. Still, so my I, fat fin- fingers are trying to pick them little uh, things it's up. Just, it's just finicky almost, but it's like it kind of overshadowed with the gameplay just a little. Yeah, bit. I mean the gameplay more than makes up for it. But upon breaking it out, and Jerry, we're like had this game day available. We shot out. What about Mirage? We haven't played it in two years. Let's let's do it, man. I just I forgot how much I love this game, even though it's it breaks my brain. And it is <laughs> Jerry, a man not really prone to analysis paralysis. Like that's my job or Enrique's job. That's the only negative I'd say to this yeah. is because you're really crunching numbers. Oh yeah. And you're trying to figure out where to build your dam, where to build your conduit, where to that would I could see that being a downside. But if you have a regular play group, if you play it regularly, I think you could get in a good groove of what you want to do. Because it took like me and Jerry like two, three tries at least to understand it. And then like Barrage is up there with for me for like with brass and and yeah, uh yeah. yokohama all these well-respected euro games to me and barrage is one of those i that would it be on your top 20 oh yeah every list i've made barrage has been in there like it is it is it, i'm ready to do our top 20s uh maybe not next episode but certainly soon we need to do it we need to do our year in review since we didn't do 2020 and 2021. We need to talk about the games that we played that were from the, that. We'll have to combine them because we'll, we don't have much from 2021. And then mm. then we'll do our, our top 20. Okay. All right. This is Jerry saying that this is episode w- very well despite its rough patch. Uh, of uh, my banter? No. You just <laughs> really brought it down with leprosy ridden. Armadillos and urine pools and <laughs> things. I, you don't know the hours of research that went into you, that. I know. Uh, thank you. Best, best life, life on on on. On. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Gabby, the primary host. This is Jerry. This is Enrique. Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. Stay classy.